Hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be checking out more from Salmonella. The video we have today is Obscure Obsolete Inventions, which has been in my Watch Later playlist probably since the beginning of the channel. I've been ready to watch this one. For some reason, it's never happened. I'd even convinced myself that I had seen it before, but I looked in the playlist, it's not there, so uh, it never happened. So I, I guess it, it's finally the time. This has been a long time coming. Uh, maybe I've seen something with similar su subject matter. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are a million other videos talking about inventions that now are kind of irrelevant. So that, that may have happened and maybe I'm conflating them. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get started with this one. This should be fun. All right, after months upon months of unrelenting pressure by you psychopaths pretending to be my characters on Twitter, I finally got a merch store. Let this be a lesson, kids. With enough harassment, you can achieve anything. Anyway, go check it out, or don't, whatever. Uh, being a reactor, I get to interact with a lot of different creators' fan bases, and I can get a general idea of what they're dealing with on kind of a smaller scale. Salmonella fans, they are enthusiastic, to say the least. Um, some of the most enthusiastic I have encountered, and that's saying something, because we have Hamilton fans on here. <laughs> Hey kids, if I learned anything from my middle school career, it's that what may seem like a good idea initially will often be remembered only as a foolish mistake. Here's a few pieces of technology from of yesteryear course. that have since fallen into total obscurity. So I've always believed that there's no point in having many small things when you can have one big thing. Why have many shrimp when you can have one lobster? Why drink many glasses of milk when you can eat one udder? Why have many cheese its when you can have one cheese them? Patent pending. And why have many street lights when you can have one moonlight Tower. These guys were real popular back in the 1880s and 90s, oh, often yeah. standing at over 150 feet tall and illuminating several blocks from a single point. Not very. Yeah, it, that it's an interesting idea. I, I kind of respect it in the grand scheme of things, but depending on the type of community you're lighting up, this doesn't seem like the best sort of idea. I feel like any way for this to work, you would need more than one just to make you sure you're lighting it properly from different angles. Uh, if you are in the just the wrong placement maybe behind a taller building you're still gonna kind of be in darkness i would assume um yeah and to have multiple moonlight towers would kind of defeat the purpose of having one big tower you may as well just have regular street lights i'm sure there are other problems but that's what i could imagine very well, mind you. Matter of fact, they were so dim, we didn't even have the conscience to just call them light towers. Had to go and stick the moon on the front so people didn't get their hopes up. But thanks to our good old friend, the inverse square law, you still needed a fuck ton of light to pull this off. So they used incredibly harsh and UV emitting arc lights instead of incandescent bulbs. All the light Sick. of the moon and all the vision damage of the sun? Talk about a win-win. Sadly, these beasts have fallen by the wayside over the past century or so. Except for in Austin, apparently. But they use friendlier hmm. mercury vapor lamps in them so they only get half points. Now, anyone who's been <laughs> around a baby long enough knows they always have a cloud. I've got a decent amount of people who watch me from Texas. Um, yeah, how is that if that's still around today? Is it equally efficient? I, I don't know if we actually have people from Austin specifically. Uh, maybe we do, maybe we don't. If you have seen them, like... Is, d does it work pretty well? Do they just have one, or are, is it like a series of them, just so you don't have to have lights as close to one another? Would you prefer to have regular street lights? I I'm curious. When whenever we have stuff that can relate to you guys who are pretty diverse, you, you come from all over, so maybe we'll have somebody in the comments who can tell us what that'd be like. Out of ghoulish stench hovering around them. Jeez Louise, somebody better air out that musty little muskrat before grandma starts drooping again. You could stick him on the clothesline for a while, but knowing that little moron, I'm sure he'd find a way to hurt himself somehow. Introducing the baby cage. Finally, oh, city God, dwellers no. all across yes, the I've nation have a way of unleashing their postnatal funk on the unsuspecting passerby below. These were in vogue for a while before we're falling out of style a bit of the way into the 20th century, because apparently society started deeming babies more valuable than air conditioners, 
I don't really get it personally, but this is also around the time we started putting lead in gasoline, so it's probably for the best we kept them inside all day. Matter of fact, it's my firm belief that without kids growing up breathing lead, there's no way Pet Rocks would have taken off in the 70s. <laughs> wow, alienating baby boomers. He's so brave and controversial. Now, in the days between the Great War and the not as great but still pretty alright war, people the the baby cage thing like i could not even imagine that i i don't know what they possibly could have been thinking with that one um i i i guess as generations go by people have become more and more careful with their babies uh but the fact that it was ever at that point i don't fully understand what culturally could have even driven that people were trying to find efficient means of detecting an incoming air attack they climbed their nation's tallest mountains to seek the wisdom of their greatest elders and the wise men said hmm big ears so that's what they did. These giant discs were known as acoustic mirrors and were designed to focus incoming sound over a five meter diameter into a single point. They were reasonably effective as listening devices. A few of them in Britain were able to pick up the sound of a plane from all the way across the English Channel. Chorus radar came Ooh. along soon after, rendering these things completely useless beyond looking brutalist as hell. For real, instant album <laughs> cover material right here. Ah, one of the pet boys. Like that's actually really cool. Like I, I understand that it became obsolete based on like radars or whatever but like as a general idea i i actually really appreciate that that that's a, a very innovative concept this is one of those cases where it, it's not like a bad idea that they realize oh well, this is a bad idea this is a, actually a decent idea considering what they had that just happened to come by a little bit too late i I'm, i actually think that's really cool on looking brutalist as hell. For real, instant album cover material right here. Ah! One of the pet boys is pulling a Spanish Inquisition on this poor wayward harlot. Oh, huh. I've seen these Just things. kidding. Despite the fact that this looks so very, very much like a state-of-the-art instrument of torture, it's actually just a beauty micrometer. Think those shoe size measure things at Foot Locker, only instead of one primitive measurement, it records the entire topology of your face and skull at once. With this data, a trained cosmetologist would be able to pinpoint exactly what features of your head should be enhanced and reduced with makeup in order to achieve a maximum calculated attractiveness after you've paid for their services. Clearly this device must have been effective. After all, beauty is entirely objective. What, eye of the beholder? <laughs> Check the name tag, buddy. Apparently though, women didn't like being strapped into a birdcage and having their every minute flaw meticulously laid out in front of them. So this thing- So as an instrument, it, I kind of get why it's a thing, because to have something like that, if you ever had the need to measure everybody's facial features to like inc an incredible extent of detail, I, I kind of get how this could be useful. It's more like the uh, the actual use of it was kind of stupid. Like if they had something more useful they could do with those measurements, uh, something a little bit more practical, uh, maybe even something medical, maybe if that ever mattered, um, I could see something like this being helpful, but I guess it just doesn't seem to have a very, a very practical use, at least not one that's worth how incredibly scary it looks uh, i i imagine that's not the nicest experience this thing never really took off in the end next we have the humlauf this was a device made during World oh War is that II the bend that's the bendy gun shoot around corners it's like the germans sat down and watched that part in tom and jerry where the conniving rat bends the gun barrel back at his adversary they said mein gott they came in a variety of angles between 30 and 90 degrees and even came with a little periscope so you could see what you were shooting at but as we all come oh, to find cool. out when we reach adolescence I was about to think, like, how do, how do they see around the, the corners? Is it like a series of mirrors or something? Because that's the only thing I can think. Oh, well, that that's really cool. Um, I wonder why that ever went out of fashion. Cartoons are the arbiters of deceit, because these things would <laughs> invariably break within the first couple hundred shots or so. Oh, and no. even when they did work, the rounds would fucking explode from the massive acceleration, turning a deadly bullet into an ineffectual spray of shrapnel. These were so ineffective that only the 30 degree model ever saw significant production beyond prototypes, and even that was very limited. Say, you ever look at regular mouse traps and go, hmm, not enough property damage? Well, check this out. Patented in 1882, it's the revolver mouse trap, oh, brought to you by the makers of the snail trebuchet and the cockroach 
Claymore. Thanks to the marvels of the modern era, all those tiresome hours of intense varmint slang can be outsourced to one little gadget on the floor of your kid's playroom. Now, Oh, it's like that guy who, uh, he, there's this legal case where this guy, uh, had a lot of break-ins in his house and then he set up like a shotgun to go off when somebody opened the door. Um, it's like that, but with something as little as a mouse. It, it, it Clearly, that would cause way more damage than it's worth. I mean, it must only be for the satisfaction of the guy who's perhaps been bothered by this mouse that long. Otherwise, I... That, it's just one of those things, it's just extra. It's way too extra. When you hear a gunshot in the middle of the night, you can rest easy knowing that, one way or the other, there's one less pest for you to deal with in the morning. Boom. 1850. Steam locomotives are all the rage. You're in the transport business, but all you can afford is a couple dumb horses. Sure, they move things from point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the cost, but your cool rail riding friends called you a whack ass and it really hurt your feelers. Well, have we got the invention for you? The Impulsoria uses an ingenious oh. system of treadmills to turn that horse to be beckoned into a force to be reckoned with. Sure, it's expensive as hell to make and limits your services entirely to railroads, but just look at it. Instant yeah. feel. Slap some rims and a spoiler on that, you're laughing. This machine... Yeah, that look... That looks really cool, but absolutely impractical. Like, if you're gonna... Just... It's you're combining things that don't need to be combined. Uh, I, I don't... I don't get it. Um, it it's... Sometimes when technology is developing, um, they want to just incorporate it into everything, even things that people just don't really need it incorporated into. It, it, you do it because you can, and this must be one of those examples. Railroads, but just look at it. Instant pussy mobile. Slap some rims and a spoiler Indeed. on that, and you're laughing. This machine is recorded at having a maximum output of two to four horsepower, which sounds about right, and it didn't see much use outside a couple exhibitions. Now, if there's one hobby that people in the past enjoyed, it's smoking. Who boy, did they like smoking. And with every great wholesome activity comes <laughs> oh, a million novelty items kids. to go along with it. Everyone's seen the long cigarette, but how about the really long cigarette? Want to smoke <laughs> in the rain? Here you go. Going snorkeling? Hey, you know what's more important than oxygen? Nicotine. But hey, want to know the only thing better than a cigarette? Two cigarettes. You know what? Fuck it. Have the whole pack. You earned it. Of course, if you're trying to cut back, you can always share it with a friend. Aw, how heartburning. But you know it's even more fun than it. Okay, that one, the sharing with a friend thing, like, I'm not a smoker. I've never smoked in my life. I, I, I wouldn't touch the stuff. But uh, that one at least makes a little bit of sense because you're making more out of less i guess you're you're sharing between two people when you add like three four five onto like one thing it's just like you could just smoke one at a time and eventually you'd end up smoking all of those i i personally don't know what it feels like to smoke a cigarette i don't know if the sensation's different from inhaling the smoke from five of them or whatever but uh this one where you at least share it i at least get that one a little better. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it's uh, a little less stupid. Addiction. High quality documentaries. That's why you should check out Curiosity Stream. From the face behind the Discovery Channel, Curiosity Sick. Stream lets you stuff your little meatuses full of all the bizarre knowledge the world has to offer. And with over 2,400 titles, there's no way there isn't something that interests you here. Remember Secret Life of Pets? Trash movie. Turgid prose, stilted dialogue, pandering humor, and above all, highly unrealistic. On the other hand, The Secret Life of Dogs is an absolute treasure. Did you know they turn their tongues into weird inside out ladles when they drink? Just one of the many fun facts found inside. Oh. Normally, full access I mean, to that makes sense. stream only costs kind $2.99 a month or $20 a year, which is nothing. That's like a McDonald's run every four months. But if you still have your doubts, <laughs> you can get 30 days free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the sign-up process. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and check out this JPEG. I, I didn't see that. I want to check out that time, JPEG. I'm Salmonella, and check out the... You ain't from Delaware if you've never had the... Oh, is that real? Is that, that can't be real. I'm just going to assume that's fake until somebody tells me otherwise. I've had moments in Salmonella videos uh, where I'm like, no, no, he, he's kidding. He, he, he's building that up for a joke or, or he's, uh, he's editorializing. But then you guys will come at me and be like, no, actually, that's real. So I'm not going to doubt anything. <laughs>
uh, at least not too much. Uh, that one, you know, none of those inventions really surprised me that much. There, there were. A f it, it's it's really fun to think about how people approach new technology. Um, when new technology comes around and they really want to tweak it and they really want to see how much they can get out of it for every great invention there's a million stupid things that's why we have info not infomercials uh uh, uh television uh, commercial things uh what are they called um oh they are infomercials i had the right term the whole time there we go. Um, uh, I, I thought infomercials was, some for some reason, supposed to be educational or something. No, they just sell you products. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so this one was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be checking out a few more Salmonella videos in the near future. I hope you guys end up tuning in for those. Might be sooner than you think. Uh, I've been uh, doing a little bit more binging of individual creators going forward. And to give you a sneak peek into the behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, a lot of creators, I'm going to be doing little spurts of their content, like three or four videos in a pretty short period of time. Uh, and then go to different creators and do little spurts of their content rather than just uh, random videos once every few weeks from each creator. Um, yeah, I, I think that might be a better way to go about it. So thank you for watching this, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another video.